So as of yesterday, August 31st, 2020, I reached a goal. I reached a giant milestone of $100,000 in the stock market. So real quickly, let's jump into the portfolio. Portfolio value is sitting at $101,878. And uh, annual income is sitting at $3,064. So typically, whenever I show off my portfolio, which is something I don't like to do often, uh, my portfolio value goes down. So I'm actually pretty surprised that it's still over 100,000 right now. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing a Q&A from all the Instagram questions that I got. If you guys haven't followed me on Instagram yet, go follow me right now at Bruce Wang. And uh, let's jump right into the first question. If you guys wanna jump around the questions, links are gonna be down below. I'm gonna try to get the YouTube timestamp codes uh, ready for you guys if I can manage to get that working. So the first question is, any regrets in your last two year journey investing wise? And uh, yes, I do have a lot of regrets. I wish I just went all in on Apple and Tesla before the stock split and you know, just before everything that happened. One of my biggest regrets was uh, buying and selling Tesla at around $200. This was like mid 2019. So in hindsight, especially when it comes to the stock market, you're obviously not gonna know what stocks to invest in before they just skyrocket into outer space. But yeah, Tesla was one of them, Apple was one of them as well. And I have some investment regrets, especially when it comes to cryptocurrency, um, also with some business investments that I made in the past as well, but that was like five years ago. But my biggest takeaway when it comes to all of my regrets is you're gonna fail. You're gonna fail a lot, but you just can't be afraid of you know making mistakes. You just have to go through them and correct your mistakes and just move on. Next question, should I dump XOM? So when it comes to ExxonMobil, performance hasn't been doing pretty well. And with a few of my other stocks as well, they haven't been performing pretty well over the last few months. And typically what I like to do with those type of stocks is I just buy the dips. Um, it, I'm not spending a lot of money buying the dips. I typically throw in a hundred dollars here and there. Today I bought about five shares of ExxonMobil because I don't know when the bottom of ExxonMobil is, but it's a lot easier for me to buy companies that are not performing well versus companies that are just taking off like Apple right now and Tesla right now. And in this case, when it comes to ExxonMobil, my average cost is around $48. So the only thing that I can do is just try to lower my average cost. And, you know, that's another, and that's it. And that's just a more complicated way of saying buy the dips. So the next question here is, should I stick with Tesla and Apple? I'm a little bit worried. And I completely feel you, right? Who knew that these two companies would just continue skyrocketing even after the stock split? I thought that, you know, I speculated that after, when the stock split happened that these companies would just start uh, to fall back to a normal price range. But instead, the opposite happened and it just continued to keep skyrocketing. Um, a lot of people right now, I'm thinking they have itchy fingers. They don't really know what to do with these companies. And uh, whenever I feel that way myself, I typically just take a little bit of profit off the top. You know, I don't own that much Tesla and Apple, but... I would take 5% off if I feel like I need to do something, especially if I didn't know what to do. Uh, but yeah, I'll just take a little bit of profit off the top and, and just continue to hold on to these companies for the long term. So the next question is basically, what are some dividend stocks that you recommend? And whenever I hear this question, this is, this is the one question that I get asked the most. So I should have a pretty good answer for this. Basically, I'm assuming that this person is a newer type of investor and, you know, that's all good. I'd recommend a newer investor the same thing that I did when I first started. Invest in a diversified ETF or an index fund that pays a dividend. That's what I did with SPHD. That's what I did with uh, VOO, the S&P 500. Take a look at these companies. You know, when you, are, when you invest in an ETF, it's already diversified. So you have that protection going for you. But when you invest in single individual companies that, you know, they either they might be performing bad or they might be doing really well. You're not really sure how to value that company. It's a lot more difficult. But if you invest in an ETF like VOO, then one company is not going to do that much damage if it, you know, goes bankrupt or does really badly over the long term. Because in an ETF is so diversified that, you know, the other stocks will be able to hold on to its value versus that one company not doing so well. So that's the long answer. The short answer is just to invest in an index fund or an ETF, very similar to VOO. That's something that I started out with. 
So the next question is a real estate question. Thoughts on purchasing new construction as rental properties. I have zero experience buying new construction. I'm So I live in Massachusetts and in my area, all of the houses around me that I purchase and have renovated and rented out, they're about 100 years old on average, all right? So it's a lot easier for me to find a really messed up house and fix it up. But if you're going to go for a new construction, you're not going to have that many problems, but you are paying a premium for that. All right. So if you're going to go the way that I do it, just, you know, buying a messed up house, rehabbing it, renting it out is definitely a lot harder, but you can build a lot of equity really fast. But if you're buying a brand new construction, then you are already pricing in that premium and all of that equity. You're not going to, you can't really build it into that and you have to pay full price for it. So the next question here is buying stocks as a teenager. Right now, if you're 18 years old and you're an American, then you are in one of the greatest times to be able to invest right now. If I knew that I could invest this easily when I was 18 years old, which was 14 years ago, then uh, I would have definitely done it. But unfortunately, 14 years ago, I would have to go through like a bunch of hoops and everything to even be able to invest And right now with all these commission-free brokerages, links in the description if you guys haven't signed up yet, it's the easiest and best time to invest. And I think that's why the markets are just on fire right now. Um, A lot of new investors are coming in. But with that, you have to know that you're going to make a lot of mistakes as a teenager just starting out to invest. Even if you're just starting to invest when you're 30 years old, like I did, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. So The best thing that you can do is just learn from other people's mistakes and try not to make them, but you're going to go through them. Just get through them really fast and just move on to the next one and uh, just try to invest as fast as possible. So this is a great question. What's your return on investment for my entire stock market portfolio? And roughly when I just check out the uh, Simply Safe dividends here where it has all my information, it says that my return on investment is 12.3%, which is not that bad. I think that if I threw all this into an index fund or an ETF like VOO, my return on investment would be a lot better. But, you know, you live and you learn. And uh, 12%, I'll take that. It's pretty good. It's a lot better than some of my uh, rental properties, which, um, you know, return on investments are around 10%. All right, so the next question is, how much do you make a year after taxes? This year, right now, I'm roughly going to be able to make around 200,000 after taxes this year, which is the most money I've ever made, you know, ever. And uh, yeah, that's thanks to just multiple streams of income. I'm making money from my day job, which is a property manager. I'm making money from my rental properties. I'm making money from my YouTube and my YouTube affiliates and my YouTube business. And now I'm also making money from, you know, my dividend portfolio. It's not that much, but it's still, you know, it still adds on and still helps out a lot. So this is a, so this is a great question as well. Who are your mentors and advisors? Personally, I have, when it comes to the stock market side, I had no advisors or mentors. So I had to do all that online and through, you know, YouTube sites, YouTube uh, channels through, through wet Reddit posts and everything. So links are going to be down below if you guys want to, you know, find out some of the resources that I'm using. I've also went through books and courses and all that. And that was pretty tough not being able to call upon somebody and, you know, just ask them directly, hey, what is this? How do I do that? But to tell you the truth, you can definitely learn this on your own. You don't really need to have like a financial advisor. In my opinion, I don't think you need a financial advisor. Uh, when it comes to the real estate side, luckily, uh, you know, people in my family have experience doing um, commercial properties and residential properties. So that was a lot easier because I already had, you know, the hookups when it comes to what contractors to use or who to call to fix whatever issues that I'm having. Some other resources when it comes to real estate is Bigger Pockets. That's a great free resource. And uh, I also linked some book recommendations down below if you guys want to learn more about real estate as well, because that's where everything started for me. I started with real estate first, and now I'm moving into stocks just to diversify my entire portfolio here. All right, next question here is, are you buying into Apple and Tesla after the stock split? So last in the last week, Tesla and Apple, they did a stock split. Tesla was like five to one, and Apple was four to one. And, you know, I have a decent amount in both companies, you know, within like a few thousand dollars in uh, Apple and maybe one or two thousand in Tesla. So, This is a great question, and 
my strategy right now is more of a wait and see approach. I'm really limited to obviously the amount of cash that I can invest in a, a certain company. And just right now it's just a wait and see. Um, I would put in a little bit of money just because I can do fractional shares, but um, I'm not going too heavy into Apple and Tesla right now just because they're at all time highs and you know, the trend is going up, but eventually it has to come down some sometime, right? Am I right? It has to come down sometime, right? All right. Last question here is what's the next goal? The next goal for me is more of a business type goal. I want to be able to, you know, help more people if I can. I want to be able to make more money from uh, my social media business as well. Uh, one of my goals right now is to get to win 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. I'm about 10,000 away. So if you guys haven't subscribed yet, go subscribe right now. On Instagram as well, I'm trying to get up to like 10,000 subscribers on Instagram. So go help me out there if you guys haven't. If there's 90,000 subscribers on my channel now, then definitely I should be able to get 10,000 on Instagram, right? Uh, if you guys want to know what I'm posting daily and everything, I post daily there all My personal stuff is on there, so just go check it out if you guys want uh, more insight into my daily life. And if you guys saw my video from yesterday, you guys know that I have a ultimate goal of getting $10 million in the next 10 years from my dividend portfolio, from my stock portfolio, and a real estate portfolio combined. And obviously, I'm somewhere in the beginning of that. And uh, even if I don't make it all the way to $10 million in the next 10 years, I'll still be completely fine if I even reach $5 million. Um... You know, I, I live a pretty comfortable life. I don't have like super expensive things, but right now I'm still young. I still have a lot of energy. So definitely I'm going to try to be as ambitious as possible. Um, another goal is I want to be able to, you know, live in America and live in Cambodia. So, you know, I lived in Cambodia for five years before I moved here to America to start all of this. And um, in those five years, I developed a lot of friendships. I've developed Um, you know, I have a lot of family members over there as well. And I have, um, I have this like strategy or, and I have this thing that I want to do with the fire community. I want people to see what it's like to live in Cambodia. I want to, you know, there's a lot of expats down there and I want to, you know, develop the fire movement down there because in Cambodia, it is a low cost of living, um, city or area. And, um, you know, people in America that want to, get out of their situation, they can easily move to Cambodia for many various reasons. And uh, that's definitely something on the back burner for me right now. But, um, you know, I'll be there later on uh, at the end of the year. Hopefully I'll be there if, uh, you know, I can get a flight. And um, if you guys want to see content like that, uh, subscribe now. Uh, Watch these videos here for more content just like this. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to hit the notification. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, follow me on Instagram as well. And I'll check you guys out later. Thanks for watching. Bye.